Hi, my name is David Brown. I'm an applications engineer for Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at the techniques that I use to create this parametric Kanban system, shelf unit that organizes parts on a production floor. Basically, it's a, a 3D sketch drives the entire model in, in an assembly. And what I've done is I've created a library of connector parts that I'm going to use I'm going to attach that to the 3D sketch, and then I'm going to extrude and create parts that represent the tubes within the context of the assembly. So basically when I change any of these parameters on this model, the whole thing updates. So I can change the depth of that. So let's take a look at that. So basically I begin with this 3D sketch in an assembly. And uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that, but basically what I've done here is I've done it right at the assembly level. And I've created it, the sketch, so that it's coincident to the top plane. And the origin is then in the center of my part, so I have the front plane and the right plane going right through the center of my parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my origin point. I'm going to begin by dragging in one of my T connectors. I'll show you how I do this. So I bring this in, I just plop it in there, and as you know, in an assembly, the first component is fixed, so I need to right-click on this, I need to float that so I can move it around, and I'm going to put it in this position here. I'm going to control select this cylindrical face and this line in my sketch and add a concentric mate. Now I have this placed in here. I'll position this down here like this. And so what I do is I turn this a little bit and I'm going to add another one to the other side. And I can either drag another one in from my library or I can make copies from my feature manager tree and I'll show you how I do that in a second. Go ahead and add another concentric mate here and I'll posi position this and I'm going to control select these two faces and add a concentric mate to line those up. So basically now I've got these two in my sketch or in my assembly and mated to that sketch and then aligned to each other. So now that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the tube that goes between these. In order to do that I need to insert a component because I, I don't have this component yet. I select the down button below insert components and I choose new part and what happens is it asks me to choose my template I'm going to use millimeters because this system is in millimeters and then what I need to do is I'm going to choose one of the planes in my uh, assembly that is going to be represent the in place mate for this new part and basically I'm going to choose my right plane and what that does is that opens me up in a in a sketch in that new part that's now being created in the context of the, this assembly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inner diameter of one of these connectors, select that, and choose Convert Entity. And what that does is it places it on that sketch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an offset entity here, tenth of an inch, I'll go inside that, and that's just basically going to represent my tube diameter. Okay? So now what I have is I've got my profile, and now I need to extrude this to, uh, to match up with my connectors. So I'll choose uh, Extrude, change the direction, and I want to do Offset from Surface. I'm going to choose this surface here, I need to choose 30 millimeters because this system is designed for, and then I'm going to reverse the offset so that it goes inside. So these tubes go inside this connector to a depth of 30 millimeters. That's how these are all designed. Once I do that, I need to go the other direction and do the same thing. Do offset from surface, choose the face of that connector. 30 millimeters and then reverse the offset 
and now I have that tube created. Okay, now at this point, what I can do is this tube now is created, and I can exit this. Now I've returned to my assembly environment, and I can move. If I try to move the tube, it says it's fully defined and can't be moved. But at this point, if I can move the connectors, they will move, and then an update will readjust that. So those are, those are all positioned and will function together the way they should within this assembly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the parts that go on the back. And if I were to mirror this right now, then it would stay the same. And I could do that. I could mirror these components. I could combine them into an assembly subassembly and but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a couple more parts and I can drag these right in and I'll do the same thing I'll attach these with a concentric mate position this one around here a little bit add these concentric mates and now these are working as well. Now what I would do is I could do the same thing and create that same tube, but actually this tube is going to be the same length as this one no matter what I do with whatever changes that I make. So what I can actually do at this point is I can right click on this part. This is the new part and I can rename this as front tube, let's say. Actually, I'll just make it with tube because that would make actually make more sense. But what I can do at this point is I can just take this, hold my control key down, and drag one of these in, place that in my part, and I can grab this and select my Alt key and do a Smart Mate on there. And now with these two tubes, what I will do is I will position these with the right plane, actually the front plane of each of these tubes. Pull my control key down, add a coincident mate, and that mates those up. So now I have an independent bar that goes in the back. This tube and this tube are essentially the same part, but now I can move these independently and I would do that because I might want this back shelf to be higher than the front shelf. The next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to create these legs over here. In order to do that I need to do the same thing. Minimize this a little bit and I'm going to choose insert component, new part, part millimeter, this time I'm going to choose the top plane. And I'm going to begin a circle. And this time I'm going to actually dimension it 23 millimeters because that's the inner diameter of those connectors. And I could further offset this, reverse that direction. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this with a little bit different end condition. I'm going to choose up to vertex and choose this corner vertex and hit OK. Then I'll exit this part and I'm going to name this, rename that, front leg. Because these are different than the back legs. And with this one I'll again take my control key, drag this in, make this concentric to that sketch, and then I will mate this coincident to the top plane. And now I've positioned that. 
So as you can see, I'm building this, uh, building this, uh, this stand up. And I'll do the same thing. I'll repeat the same procedure with the back. The cross tubes, we'll simply drag in new tubes and I'll mate them to the tubes themselves. And what I can do with that is the act actually the same thing. I'll put these tubes on here, arrange them, and then I will extrude a tube between those two. So if I return back to my part stand, you just continue doing that, that same thing to add all of the different components into the assembly. And what I did with this is I chose to group my parts, my components, into sections. What I did, so I, I created this lower base and I grouped that into a folder. And then I created the lower bin support with the bins included in a folder. And I added the legs and their components into a separate folder. And then what I did was I just simply patterned the shelves in a pattern. So all I really had to do is create the legs, my lower shelf, and this lower base support, and then just pattern the rest. And that's about it. So in today's video we covered the basic techniques for creating this parametric Kanban system. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel and thanks for watching.